Topo Athletic is committed to lifelong health and better movement. Topo builds running shoes for those who get out there every day, regardless of weather, speed, energy, or mood. Their distinctive fit and feel combines instinctive human movement with modern performance and lightweight comfort to help you keep going, keep trying, and keep moving. Discover the Topo difference and step into a run experience unlike any other. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Fireside Chat number 100. That's right, folks, number 100. We've been doing this um, for now our 100th time, and we are super excited to have Adam Lee on. He is the host of the podcast and writer of the Substack for Community Trail Running. He is also uh, an event host licensee for the Trail Running Film Festival. We're going to talk about that um, as we go forward. But before we even get started, I want to give a big shout out to our guy, Razik Rauf, who uh, I met through Threads who then passed along an invitation for me to chat with Adam. And I've talked to him. This is our third or fourth time now um, chatting. He interviewed me for his podcast. We've interviewed him or I interviewed him for a story. Um, and every time we've talked, I think we probably spend more time laughing than we do actually talking. So I'm expecting this to be just a whole lot of fun. Um, make sure you drop your comments on whatever platform you are on, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, or LinkedIn. We'll make sure we get it over to Adam. Adam, thank you very much for being our 100th guest on the Run, Try, Bike, Fireside chat. Welcome. I'm so excited to keep it 100 with you guys. It'd be a huge honor for me. <laughs> honor with a U, of course. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to mention, he is in Canada. So <laughs> everything we say has a U with it. So it's not color, it's color. It's on or, right? Just make sure when, when you're typing your comments, you throw the U in so we make sure Adam feels welcome and, and at home with us. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so in the green room, before we got started, I gave Adam a, a big congratulations and I want to share it publicly. His podcast has hit 20,000 downloads and for those of you that don't know, like that is a huge number of people listening to his conversations with athletes and race directors and, and kind of like what we're doing here, same type of audience. Um, dude, when you started your podcast, was that a number that even you would even think about or you were just like, man, I'm just going to talk to people? Yeah, exactly. I didn't think about numbers at all. It just just. um I chatted the very first person I had on was a, a hypnotherapist that I had worked with because I had sleep issues. Um, and I thought it'd be cool to talk about from a trail running lens. And from there, it was just fun to have conversations. I get to reach out and meet people like yourselves and just kind of dabble. Uh, I don't get to travel as much as I'd like to. And this is my way to travel around the world and chat with trail runners and people who love our community. So the fact that it's hit 20,000 is super special. And that was you know who knows where it'll go it was never the point to make it anywhere and i think as long as that continues to be the point and the point is to just meet people and share their stories the the numbers will continue to follow when you did when you started the 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 podcast as well as the substack like did you have an idea of the type of people you wanted to talk to and record with and, and or write about or were you like this person seems cool that person seems cool and then it developed over time it definitely um, developed. Like I literally sat down, I ran the Squamish 5050 and I was like, I just want to write about this. Uh, it felt good to be creative. And then trail running, just that space was like, I think I want to do something in this. And I bought a microphone when it was on sale at Best Buy. Uh, Cause I kind of thought that interviewing people would be fun. I used to work in media. So I have um, some experience with working with interviewing and, and editing and that kind of thing. And, as soon as I did it once, I was like, oh, this is really fun. And if I, if you listen back, the first episode's so bad. Like, of and of course it is. We always get better as we go. But um, just, yeah, it just kind of hooked me. And you reach out to people and they're very supportive of it and excited. And it's like, my email list is 14 people. Like, if you want to come on, we can chat. And <laughs> like, my mom will like the hell out of it. But <laughs> <laughs> I... I want to like reflect on that because it seems like both of us had a path of like what you started started as a throwaway idea. What we started here started as a throwaway idea that evolved into something bigger. 
And even with our first fireside chat, like I can think back to how Jason and I were talking over each other. And like we were just so awkward on there. Like it's an Instagram live. I'm so nervous, you know, and it's just cool to see that you were on a similar trajectory and both of us have in common that we just want to hear people's stories. Absolutely. I think that we have, um, and we'll have to get together uh, in person sometime and make that happen. But I feel like uh, it's a very similar group. We're all kind of doing the same thing, finding our way in this space and realizing that community is uh, at, at the base of it all, I think. I, when you mentioned Squamish, I, and we've talked about this, but remind me, did you do the race the year that it was like the, you know, torrential horrendous rain? Yeah, the, 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 the atmospheric river year as it's been because it's become known. <laughs> I, I So, I, and we've talked about this, like fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, I got stuck. I was living in Phoenix at the time. Lori and I flew to Seattle, which is where we are now. And when we landed in Seattle, uh, Alaska Airlines let us know that, oh, you need to have this, all these things for COVID to get into Canada. And it was like, well, I don't have this shit now. Like, what are you talking about? So we never actually went to the race to participate in it. And then like the very next day or two or whatever, start seeing all these videos and images of, you know, ankle to knee high water. Like, take us through that. Like, how, what was that experience like? I, and I can honestly say, like, I just don't care about rain anymore. Like that weekend <laughs> broke me, literally broke me. I just don't give a shit about rain. Like, I don't care. Let's go. Like, I, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was something. And like my, thank God for my wife. She like, she doesn't drive. So she used a bus and taxis and she made her way around to aid stations. She grabbed my shit and get to the laundromat. So I had stuff. Cause like I went, I burnt through everything the first day. Cause like, <laughs> it was so wet. I wore a garbage bag all weekend. Um, but like, again, you can, you can only get so wet. Um, and it just kind of brought everyone closer on the trails. And then day two, like it just totally feeds your ego because you hear like, oh, there's the it's the highest drop rate in the in the history of the race already, and you're like, oh, I haven't fucking dropped so. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll see you your ass like this. Like this. Yeah, exactly. Right <laughs> in my garbage bag. Like, all right, cool. Um, um, so yeah, like a lot of ego on the second day for sure, but I, I had so much fun training for that race and it was also, you know, the celebration of that and to be able to take the start line on day two and, and kind of get through it all and know that it was all going to come uh, full circle and, and everything you kind of worked for throughout the year. A little bit of rain, you don't care. A lot of rain is the same. Like once you're wet, you're wet and it's, it is what it is. So the people standing at the aid stations all day, the people like my wife coming around, like those are the heroes as far as I'm concerned. At least we're running and, and keeping ourselves busy. You do realize you've ruined your wife, I should say, has ruined Pacers and crew forever, <laughs> right? Like if you're like, oh, I can't do X, Y, or Z, people are going to be like, yeah, well, Adam Z's wife took a bus, took a taxi. She, <laughs> made, she figured it out. You can figure this out. Oh, yeah. No, she's a legend. It's so good, too. The photographer for the race, one of them, uh, Ty Holton, he got a photo of her under her rainbow umbrella at the first aid station on the first morning. So it's like pitch dark, giant raindrops in this bright rainbow umbrella. Like, it's one of my favorite photos from a race ever. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, okay. yeah, I, the, the, the rain looking back, like it, it just makes the story all the better. Yeah. So, it's, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, oh no. I was just going to say that. Like, it's funny when you're doing it, you're just like, oh man. But then in hindsight, like you look back at the experience and it's just like, we're telling these stories and we're just laughing our butts off about it. Now it's, this is one of my favorite things about like trail running. <laughs> Right, exactly. And then you're you're finding the next race to sign up for or just planning the next adventure. Like it is what it is. You're a postman, right? Yeah, I, I deliver the mail. Right? Yeah. So like the idea of rain, sleet, snow, whatever, should like you probably were like, This is awesome. I gotta do at this for work and now I get to do this for fun. Let's go. <laughs> So the caveat again here is that's the U.S. post office, all right? We'll rain. Rain's fine. Once the snow starts here, they can 
you, you just figure it out yourselves, all right? <laughs> <laughs> We've got your mail. Come get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll be there tomorrow. Whatever. Like, don't worry about it. Maybe next week. I don't know. Okay, it's snowing out. <laughs> But you know, I do, I do love work. Uh, it's my third career. I've, I've done some stuff previously. So this um, being outside was the biggest draw and I get to socialize all day and, and be outdoors. And that's, that's the bee's knees. What do you think? And, and for me, I can answer this and Om, I'd like you to answer this too. Like for me, the opportunity to get to talk to people is one of the things that I think is the best part about running this business is just talking to people. Um, what's the best part of running your community trail running podcast and Substack? Yeah, I feel like our answers will probably be pretty similar because exactly. It's just, it's the meeting the people like I, um, from the get-go to like the 20,000 downloads and that sort of thing, I wanted to celebrate numbers with everyone because it's a community thing, but that's never the drive. It's all about connections and meeting people and um, making the world feel a little bit smaller, you know, with something you love. It's really cool to be able to know, like, I can't wait. I know, I know that uh, when I'm in Seattle, that there's someone I'm going to get to meet up with, you know, and, and that's all because of this. And it's the same with cities all over the place and, um Alm, where are you from i'm in orange county california okay so when i get to orange county next time too i know someone i get to visit so that's the kind of shit that i love you know like I, it's um all for this stupid sport <laughs> I, I say it all the time like yeah let's go run you know five ten miles but then let's go have coffee or pizza or food and sit around and just talk to each other and laugh like I, the one of the things that I, I get frustrated with with our sports and that swim, cycle, run, triathlon, all of it is the gatekeeping. You're not fast enough. You're not this enough. You're not that enough. You're not whatever. And I'm like, nah, man, I'm going to just build a bigger table because I want people to sit around and have fun and laugh with each other while we enjoy what's a hobby, right? Like the vast majority of us aren't getting paid to go run, you know, 100 miles. It's just not happening. So let's have fun with it. Let's joke around and, and have a blast. And, you know, I, um, you shared your, 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 uh, picture of eating pizza and I loved it. I was like, this is so awesome. People are now sending us pictures of themselves eating pizza. Like, <laughs> I, can, I can attest to that, man. He was so excited. <laughs> He's like shared it with me immediately. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have to agree all the same, man. I think my answer is the same as both of you. It's the stories, but not just like telling the stories, but like being that extra push for people who think that their stories don't matter because it feels like our media has portrayed X, Y, and Z is like the stories that matter. And we're out here changing that perception, which as you talked about in the green room, like that sport, our sport is just like growing and there's an opportunity for us to like, create this like all inclusive community where like everybody with everybody feels comfortable at the start line and just getting, I can't tell you how many people I talked to who were just like, um, you want to hear my story? I don't think my story would have mattered. I, I, I'm just doing a 5k, you know, like, and then you give them a nudge and they open up to you and you just, it's amazing the stuff that you hear from people. And it takes, uh, I'm, and I'll ask, you guys, but I'm, I'm fairly certain with the growth that you're experiencing that that kind of answers itself. But the more you tell the stories, the more open people are to sharing with you. Yeah. You know, it's funny you, you say that. Cause I was about to ask you like over the course of your time with your podcast, you've probably had a story or a handful of stories that have impacted you that you recall that you could tell over and over again. And to your point. So for me, that person is Jennifer Comfort. I talked to Jennifer Comfort. I interviewed her for a story and um, she was like, I just don't know what to talk about. And she was apprehensive. Right. And so I said, well, let me tell you about myself. And I told her about my issues with alcohol. I told her about my issues with disordered eating. I told her about my divorces. And then like, it was like, I gave her the freedom to express herself and she just started talking. And I sent her the story before we published it on our website. And she was like, 
one of the things I didn't talk about, and I don't know where this fits into the story on your site, is um, the reason why I got into running and why the the guy that died, a friend of hers, had passed away while running the Chicago Marathon. Um, he was the one person she told about the sexual assault that she experienced. And for her to send that to me and say, I'd like to put this in my story was super impactful. And since that post, she and I have been on a fiery embers chat and we've laughed and kind of like similar to you, like we'll, we'll talk every now and again. Um, and so we've had that real serious topic. And then during the fiery embers, I asked her, I said, you are about to get into a rocket ship with Matt Damon to blast off into Mars. And the only thing you're going to eat for the rest of your life is sweet potatoes. What are you eating before you get in that rocket ship? And, the, and, and she answered, wheat thins. And I'm telling you, dude, like the tears. <laughs> what the, like, wheat I couldn't thins. believe it, dude. I couldn't <laughs> believe when I read that. And we put out a trivia Thursday about that. And nobody, barely anyone got the answer right. I was like, why? It's <laughs> All the things you could have eaten. That was your choice, right? And so, like, I wanted to ask you that question, too, right, in return, like, what's the story or stories, uh, you know, that have impacted you through the history of the podcast that you've been putting together that you can recall immediately and be like, yeah, absolutely, this one person or this one conversation? Well, funny, like, definitely the first episode with Mimi, um, that's the hypnotherapist, just because she was so supportive and and she went way out of her comfort zone, too, because, you know, she had never talked into a mic and been recorded either or anything like that um so that stands out because it tugs at the heartstrings obviously too um but like it's so i'm gonna cop out a little bit because it's hard to pick one it's more the, the underlying message is I'll, i'm surprised at how often i'll have someone who thanks me for doing what I do for the community. And that's when I feel the imposter syndrome. Cause I'm like, I'm not like, I'm not doing anything. I just, I just talk to people and put that on the internet. Like I'm a 40 year old white guy. I think I have to record conversations and put them on the internet. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the handbook. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. yeah. Uh, but uh, like, Having said that, and that's where I'm going to jump off, um, like looking to actually promote diversity and inclusivity and looking at the BIPOC community and the LGBTQ community and trying to be better at finding athletes to highlight and doing as much as I can, that I enjoy. And I just really think the sport is in that area where it can grow organically and it has to be from the bottom up and everyone raising each other and that is sort of what I take the most pride in and how much it kind of comes back and people do recognize it so I know that's not an individual episode but that's kind of where my head has is where it brings a lot of memories and pride <laughs> yeah no that's awesome uh oh yeah. I'm gonna ask one more question as a follow-up so in in your um format your your podcasts are like you know 15 20 minutes long was that intentional or were you we'll go back to that first one where you're like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And it was like, okay, this isn't good enough and, and move <laughs> on. And that just became the thing. No, it was, it was definitely intentional. Um, I have the attention span that I do. Uh, <laughs> so 15, 15 minutes is kind of like, I figured it would be in my wheelhouse. I did it in the beginning. It was going to be 15 or less every time. Uh, and I've noticed as it's went, I like to have like 15 minutes for the conversation and then give myself some some time off the top or whatever. So it ends up being a little bit closer to 20. And that kind of came over time because 15 minutes to get either edit a conversation into it just starts to get chunky um, and trying to get someone out of some or get something out of someone in that short of time can be a little bit of a struggle. I've also fixed the foot, like figured out the format a little bit too, where we can kind of highlight something that the person works on. We're not necessarily having a conversation like the three of us are today. We kind of sit down with more of a goal to highlight what they're doing. So that was kind of the idea. We could do it in 15 minutes and, the, and get people interested and then hopefully looking to um, do some research and figure out some more about the topic themselves. That's, I mean, that's like, that makes total sense to me. Um, I think that 
it's one of the first things we thought about with like our chat too. I think it just, and then we just kind of realized that um, people just come up with like weird stuff when you're just riffing and talking and just mm-hmm. decide to start having fun with it. But I remember when we had our first one, I think we were just like putting such a heavy burden on ourselves because it was such a new thing. And then just realized that like, we personally want our chat to be like this carefree conversation that we're having right now. And that's just kind of how it became like a throwaway idea. Um, but I wanted to talk about something that's coming up really soon. Um, the, the trail running, the film festival, talk more about that. Yeah. As, as Jason mentioned, so we're, we're, um, we're licensees of the event. So I'm hosting it. I've bought a license in Vancouver and then in Alberta, we're getting into, um, Edmonton, Calgary, Canmore and Crow's Nest Pass. And that all came about, um, same sort of thing, just kind of fell into it. The executive, I'll give you the, the Coles notes version. So the tour used to go like an indie band. There was four of them that would travel the country and stay in shitty hotels and play this thing to six people or 300 people or whatever. Right. Like they did the thing. Um, and then during COVID, uh, everything switched and Matthias Eichler down in Washington, uh, took over as the executive director under this new format where they license it to local hosts and that way they don't have to tour the country and they can kind of tap into networks that already exist. So last year, he this all started. I reached out to him. I know him through the podcast. And then, well, that's where it started. Uh, and I said, how do I get involved with Vancouver? And he just said, host the show. And I said, well, I guess I'm hosting shows now. <laughs> <laughs> And I've, I've upgraded my studio now, but at the time I was literally in that closet uh, when I would voice. So it was my first time, like not looking into a closet while I was talking into a microphone was like in front of 340 people. I'm like, all right, well, here we go. So. <laughs> but we, uh, yeah, we had 340 people show up on a Tuesday at the Rio uh, last year. We had amazing sponsors uh, who were like right into the festival and everything that the festival kind of promotes which is the same sort of thing like inclusivity and diversity it's not just a bunch of people running fast uh for an hour and a half um (laughs) i have to i have to ask because for me i've been in like the sport of trail running for three and a half years and to me like i haven't seen a film on on a screen like that or been at an event, event like the trail running festival so i have to ask like what that first experience was like like being in this community of people with this inclusion and like seeing these like films come to like a bigger screen or a bigger event for a sport that we would consider like an organically growing and probably still like a very grassroots sport. Yeah, it was like such a fun and the so the the power of the evening didn't actually set in until I was there. I didn't think about it before. And I I chatted about this with Jason actually last week uh, when we touched base, I think it was but um to have trail runners all focused on something when they're not running and we're all there to just celebrate the sport was really unique. And then, so to be able to give our full attention to our conversations, even between the films and before the films uh, was incredible. And then to sit there and watch these films that celebrated our sport and sort of um, poked at it in ways that maybe we hadn't as a collective was just like such a great experience. We got nothing but great feedback afterwards. Um, not only because the films are, were really good, but we had, like I said, great sponsors. We did giveaways where we had people play in heads or tails. We had our guests play rock, paper, scissors with everyone. Like it, it's a celebration uh, of the community. Um, and again, to, to, to do that in a, in a theater like that and watch the sport on the, on the big screen. I didn't get to watch all the films in the theater. I'd watched them previously and there were a few there were certain moments I definitely wanted to be in the theater for, because I know it made me feel a certain way. And I wanted to see that emotion amongst the crowd. Um, There was one where the lady misses the sign and she comes back into frame and goes up and it's just like, you just have this little giggle, right? And I'm like, I got to see this and to watch the whole theater, just do that little, that same giggle, you know, it's just like, Oh, it felt so good. (laughs) What can people who aren't familiar with the films that are being shown expect to see? Are these, um, first person narrated, you know, they're, they're running around with their GoPro focused on them kind of stuff. Is it, do you have bigger productions? Like what kind of films are actually being shown at the film fest? Uh, so Owen shout out to Joe right on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
that's uh if we're talking favorite interviews that's one of my favorite one of my two favorites right there with joe harden so shout out to joe shout out to joe right on well if joe wanted to know more about what the kinds of films would be i would simply keep talking about them and i would say <laughs> and it's not no it's not your like uh youtube kind of thing the, the the films are produced um so last year i was impressed with the films this year i've watched the reel and i will say that they knock last year's out of the water. These are beautiful films, uh, a lot of fun to watch, well produced, great stories. There's like no to run Yataka's. I think it's hard to pick a favorite, and especially before they play. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's this Aboriginal gen gentleman that runs uh, the Western states, and it's the first year they do like a land acknowledgement there. The runner also happens to be an artist. He creates the poster for the event. It's like, it's beautiful uh and his story is awesome um yasin yasin daboon is has a film in it as well and he's an open book about his struggle with alcohol as a younger man and and how how that affected his life and kind of come full circle in his running and so the the running i love it because you get the eye candy you know these beautiful mountainous shots and all that kind of thing and then the stories are what pull you through and you, and you get to learn more about these people and and um humanize uh, everyone and, and, and make the sport more human i think it's it's just it's just so mind-boggling to me and i'll have to go to one of these film festivals one day because like every single documentary i watched even before i got into the sport like you know the way i'm envisioning it like i'm sitting in my house i'm watching it on youtube like i'm watching it on my phone so to think about it like being with an audience and reacting with the audience that's what gets me you know because that that part of it just seems amazing and i think kind of brings in that whole like community aspect that we were talking about yeah that's it you get to share the human experience i think one of the, like the movie that i've seen probably more than anything else when it comes to the trail running is the documentary that billy yang did on zach miller a number of years ago and it, i mean like I, I raced with two mantras well really one mantra and then another one has been added my mantra is all gas no brakes and the other one that's been added is show up and blow up. And like <laughs> that's the way Zach Miller races, right? Like that dude is like, look, my goal is to win, right? He's not like, <laughs> you know, I hope to finish. You know, he's like, I'm here to win. And the guy goes balls out. And when I watched um, Billy Yang's video or movie on that, like I was drawn in immediately. So I have to imagine that. The, the attendees to your <laughs> festivals, the ones that, you know, in Vancouver and then obviously now in um, Alberta that you'll be having, have got to find like that connection to it as well. And I'm sure you feel it in the theater when you when you when you feel that electricity or that emotion connected to the film that's on the screen at the time. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You get like there's a little something there for everyone. And um you never know what that'll be for someone else. So to have such a varying uh, array of stories told, that's it. Everyone in the theater has a moment or hopefully has a moment where they can kind of feel themselves in the sport and and, and the, pr the pride in the sport, right? And being a part of it. Because that's the other thing too. Like, um, I don't want to go on too much of a tangent, but all professional sports are kind of trash when you get into them now. So to have a sport where we can just love it for the for what it is 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 kind of wonderful. <laughs> all right, I'm going to put you on the spot. You are going to submit a film to the Trail Running Film Festival to be shown. What's the what's the genre? What's the storyline going to be like for Adam Lee's film when he submits it to the Trail Running Film Festival? Oh my gosh, you have put me on the spot. If it was, if it's going to have to be my ugly mug, it would be some sort of comedic relief, maybe like forty-five seconds of just giggles and and trying to make people feel much better about what they're doing. <laughs> I got it. I got one. Garbage bag. The Squamish story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like a cover of like you doing this with the. <laughs> Oh, we right. got to answer the question the, too the, now. The film fest teaser is just the bag blowing in the wind, right? Right. <laughs> With torrential downpour rain. <laughs> Wait, I got to answer the question now. Yeah, yeah. you do. You got to put a film out. What do you? What's the film gonna look like? What's the genre? What's the title? Oh, based on every race I've done, I think uh, Trail Nap, a love story. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just me, a collage of like all my trail naps or. <laughs> Can't do races without him. 
a silent film. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I gotta say, I tried going back quick. I got I tried Jason's all gas no breaks mantra, and I gotta tell you, I was first place for the first five k between. <laughs> that's and that's how I'm gonna write the story. And that's a great <laughs> story to tell, dude. Yeah. I hit my goal, dude. I was first place for the first three miles. That's my goal. <laughs> that's that's, like, that's a dope. One hundred ninety-seven mile uh, war- a cool down. Yeah. <laughs> Look. That story is going to be way better than like I was conservative in my approach, <laughs> proper amount of calories. I drank the proper amount of food and I finished the race. Uh uh-uh. uh. Like I fucking got to the start line. I went as hard as I could in this 100 mile race. I made it to mile 70 and I took a nap for six hours. <laughs> I got up and walked the other 40 miles and I finished the race, but it was the best thing since sliced bread. Like that's a much better story, dude. You know what? I'm making a BTS post about this. I don't care. I'm taking our three films, All Gas, No Breaks, Garbage Bag, and Trail Map, and making little posters. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. Way, I love it. My film would just be me breathing so heavy into the camera. Be like, <laughs> <laughs> they'd be like, this is terrible. And then Whopper. And then, uh-huh. yes. Oh, <laughs> impossible Whoppers. <laughs> Uh, there will not be a single dry, dry, like dry face. There will be so <laughs> many tears in the audience. Tears of laughter, tears of joy, like tears of sadness. Who knows? Tears. Right? If they paid their sadness, all right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Burger King, if you're listening, we're looking for sponsors. Yeah. Oh, man. You, you can put the Whoppers make- in the mail. I will deliver them. Yeah. <laughs> they need to make a film a silent film that's just people's reaction to seeing food at trail races like you know you get like that do you want this oh do you want this uh do you want watermelon mm. Ooh. <laughs> i want to see like the collage of reaction to that That would be a great film dude yes. aid stations the decision hmm yeah people don't make content about aid stations enough i think that's untapped territory for sure yeah, i actually think you're on something that would be a lot of fun you could you have I, a good yeah do you have a good aid station story, Adam? <laughs> uh, I, you know, I have, I left an aid station. I'm going to, well, should I tell this story or do you want me to save it for your, your trail misadventures? Oh yeah. You could save it for that, but okay. you, you've got to have more than one. No, no, that's yeah. That's a good one. But um, I think definitely getting to, <laughs> I, 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 I have a bit of a trucker's mouth. I know you probably know this from some of the conversations that we've had. So I think I throw a lot of people off with how much I swear. And then I'm still smiling in a good mood. So they don't really, yeah, they don't really know what to do. They, I think they think I'm okay, but they're a little worried it could go off the rails at any time. <laughs> oh, God. Um, real quick. Joe says, my trail film would be chasing cutoffs. <laughs> yeah, me too, Joe. Me too. <laughs> Amen to that. Uh, so I'll tell a- you, my aid station story is like the very first hundred. This no, this was the second one hundred I ran. I get to this aid station. They have the the tray out with like these beautifully diced potatoes that have been roasted, you know. <laughs> and I get there, it's like mile seventy. I'm, I'm fucking already. starving. I take my grubby, dirty, snot filled hand. I just put it in the tray and <laughs> grab as many potatoes as I can. <laughs> And exactly. That was the nature of politicians. Like, <laughs> meanwhile, just to the right of that is like all the beautiful Dixie cups lined up, you know, so that you could take the Dixie cup, dip it in the salt. And I was like, oh. <laughs> she just picked up the tray, turned it in the garbage, dumped it all out, and they remake them all. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. I So mine isn't the same, but I had to say I, they gave me a potato and it dropped on the ground. And this this was the, the, the 50 mile day or whatever, the last aid station. I looked at it and I looked at them. I went, I don't fucking care. And I, grabbed it and I just jammed it in my mouth. It's <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> It's so true, dude. When you're in these ultras, like all that stuff goes out the window. You just don't give a shit. You're exhausted. You're sore. Like, I want this to be over. And then they cheer for you. You're like, all right, yeah, I did the thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Oh, man. I'll be racing Lake Sonoma in about three weeks. At every aid station, I was going to be like this. You <laughs> have to. That's so I, I and that's what I try and do in the race photos sometimes too. I call it the five year old muscles because you have to flex way too hard like a five year old, and then you have to <laughs> smile real awkward like. <laughs> <laughs> That's, oh, that's the other that's another funny thing is you think you see the race photos and you're like i look great and then you look like <laughs> like, like snot coming out of your face yeah. just salt stained <laughs> hats crooked like, it, just oh, like when we did a run last april we asked people to guess whose run try bike hat it was based on our salt stain that damn good run and everyone looked at the sweatier one they're like that's jason <laughs> Let every I, I could run for two miles and look like I just got out of the shower. Like, yeah, it's just everywhere. Like when I run on the treadmill, you know, like the back half of the treadmill is like a lake. You know, that's the gym. People are like, oh, Sucking water up like a fucking jet ski. <laughs> it's my next trail film festival. <laughs> treadmill, the next jet ski. <laughs> Look, man, you've been an awesome guest, but we never let people leave without going through the rapid fire food questions. So are you ready for these? As as I'll ever be. You've you've answered this more than once, but it's our it's our quintessential question and, and we get more shit, man. We get more pictures sent to us about this than anything else. Pineapple on pizza, yay or nay? <laughs> yay, all the way. Yeah. Oh, no, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, except that the picture you sent me did not have pineapple on it. It was plain cheese oh, slice. That was that was Sheena's. Mine is mushroom. I love mushroom. Mushroom and cheese, that's my jam. Give me that. Ooh, See? Well, no well, pineapple well. on that one. Oh, but it's pineapple's good. on Canadian. And I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh canada baby <laughs> oreos are you the og are you the double stuff or are you those oreo thins which are really nothing more than fucking crackers yeah no oreo thins are garbage uh you want the original oreos and you take two of them and you put them together <laughs> like the double <laughs> stuff but you do the work yourself because i'm so sick of everyone having the work done for them <laughs> i've never heard this answer in my life a hundred episodes and we're finally here. <laughs> so when you, do you peel them or do you just pop them in like aspirin? Oh no, you want to peel them. So you, so you eat the chocolate bit and then you have to peel the next one and eat the chocolate bit. Then you put them together and then you get the payoff. <laughs> also how you make the sandwiches, the cookie lasts longer too. You're doing a lot of work, man. <laughs> I'm like an aspirin guy. I just pop them in. Just like <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 that's what happens if i don't chocolate almonds forget it like that's and get the fuck out of my way <laughs> <laughs> licorice are you a red or a black licorice fan or no licorice at all red red licorice red. for sure yep red vines or twizzlers oh twizzlers nice do you bite it off and then use it as a straw you can. It's got to be certain kinds of pops, and you only get a couple sips out of that. <laughs> pops, for those of you that don't know, it's called soda or cola, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, we have pop. We have uh, we have pop in the in the foyer here. <laughs> <laughs> foyer. foyer. You sell a lot foyer. of tickets to the Trail Film Festival, my friend. The foyer. Foyer. Right next to the garbage bag. Garbage bag. <laughs> <laughs> Easter's coming up. Are peeps a real candy, or are they just dust balls covered in glitter? What? Peeps? Yeah. <laughs> That's an appropriate reaction. <laughs> I'm going to assume by your tone they're trash. Put them with the Oreo pins. <laughs> <laughs> they are shit, dude. They're, they're marshmallow covered in, like, uh, food dye sugar, and they look like little, like, chicken peeps, right? And... We get told all the time, oh, the best way to eat those is to eat them stale. And I'm like, wait a minute. You want me to take something that's bad, make it fucking worse, and then enjoy it? <laughs> okay, so you know Sour Keys? No, we're American. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. All Canadian keys are sour and you can eat them, all right? Like, that's how it goes up here. <laughs> They're just fucking sour candies or whatever. But they'll want, like, 
the longer, the harder they get, the better they are. <laughs> when you can't chew on it, and you just have to like, oh, it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to open the package, leave it for like a month and a half, and then go back to it. <laughs> candy corn. Is candy corn a real candy, or is it just earwax covered in sugar? Oh. Uh, it depends how long it's been since you had real candy. Every day I have real candy. Oh, then it's not real candy. <laughs> <laughs> Red velvet cake. Is it a real flavor or is it just chocolate cake dressed up to go to the prom? Well, you're ruining red velvet cake for me now, I guess. Good. I thought it was fancy. <laughs> I didn't know it was just dressed up. Yeah, just chocolate <laughs> cake with red food dye, man. <laughs> like, oh, hey, they, got, they got me. <laughs> <laughs> is a hot dog a sandwich or a taco oh sandwich before taco unless you put it on a hard shell no hard shells are not a thing <laughs> <Stop it. laughs> like a hard shell is just a, a put together tortilla chip until it shatters everywhere okay so the mexican aisle at the grocery store tells me that hard shells are a thing <laughs> No, it doesn't. Old El Paso, which is an American company, tells you that it's a, a thing. It's not a thing. I'm pretty sure it's a thing. They asked me for my passport before I go down that aisle. I swear. It's in the handbook. It's in the handbook. So are you a hard shell taco fan over a, a sauce? No, no, I don't like hard shells. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Thank goodness. I don't know how words. you keep that thing together. No, they're so dumb. They're so dumb. Right? <laughs> right if just I wanted get, nachos, I would just eat nachos. Get nachos, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Glad we agree on something. <laughs> Creamy or crunchy peanut butter? Oh, uh, crunchy. All right. So then, yep. when you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, how do you make it? Do you put the peanut butter on one side, jelly on the other, and smash them? Or do you put the peanut butter and the jelly on the same side and then smash it? I put it on both and then smash them. I'm all about this, the, the double cream, you know? <laughs> and when you cut your sandwich, do you cut it into two rectangles, four triangles, or four squares? Uh, I go from the top down the middle. Two halves, right in the middle. None of that angle shit. I want the same amount of crust on both sides. <laughs> Aid station style. Yeah. <laughs> So we we uh, we interviewed. Um, oh, I just lost her name. Uh, Minnick is her last name. But I asked her how she eats her peanut butter and jelly because she said she cuts it in half, but then she turns it like corn on the cob and <laughs> eats the bread and and because she doesn't eat the crust, so she eats it like corn on the cob. I was so flabbergasted and in love with this idea. Right, like I love different op ways people eat food. Like it blew my mind. Like, would you ever consider eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that way? I think I would just cut the crust off, wouldn't I? <laughs> like, that's where my that's what you I would even do. You have a handle, and the jelly could get on your hands now, right? But you just like, cr like cramp, cramp. <laughs> that's what your mouth is for. That's the aspirin concept. Throw it yeah, all in. Exactly. <laughs> I don't need to breathe. <laughs> What's your favorite candy bar? Oh, do you have Mr. Big in the U.S.? No, I don't know. Never heard of it. Uh, it's just it's got some like wafers and caramel and chunks in it. It's Ooh. fucking delicious. Get one if you're up here. I will bring one. Perfect. Favorite flavor of ice cream? <clears throat> like you know those um, Ben and Jerry's where it's like chocolate fudge, triple chocolate, chocolate chocolate, triple fudge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, those ones. <laughs> All the chocolate. Oh my god, I was such a sucker for chocolate. Pop tarts, frosted or unfrosted? They make unfrosted pop tarts. Yeah, people love to chew cardboard, dude. That's what I'm Ooh. guessing. Yeah, I'm there for the sugar. I, they're not good. <laughs> Give me the frosting. Give me that weird, like, lab-made frosting. <laughs> you can only eat one type of food for the rest of your life. Is it going to be sweet or is it going to be savory? savory yeah i'm with you there it's gotta yeah. be savory i was always the like second plate of turkey dinner instead of pie you know are you a burrito eater 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what's what's the utopia unicorn and rainbow filling for your burrito? Just simple. Uh, like I'll get it. Usually I get chicken because I enjoy that. My wife literally gets beans, rice, and cheese uh, with the sauce, and her like you can win with that. Hundred ta- hundred times out of a hundred, that's a winner. For me, it, it's got to have. Uh, there's this place in Phoenix, and they serve the wing ding dang, and it's vegan. And it's got like buffalo cauliflower in it with vegan eggs and potatoes and Ooh. some vegan cheese in there, dude. And then they grill it. You know, it's got to be, it's got that crusty burrito shell. It's so good. Uh, there was a place in Vancouver that closed many years ago now called El Pogrecito, and they had homemade salsa that they put on top and just like, the, and simple ingredients. Oh, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it still makes me sad that it's not there. <laughs> right. This will be the last one spiciness. On a level of from zero to five, zero meaning, you know what? I'll just drink water to five. You better give me the fire hose because I'm going all in. So this is this also makes me sad because I'm 40 now and it used to be like a three or a four, I'd say. And now my body will just like fucking punch me right the hell out if I try anything. So now I'm like a one. And there's, there's like a few things that I know are safe that I could take up to that three or four. But now I'm a sad old man at the table. Like I'll take water. <laughs> I tell you this story. I was at dinner one time with a buddy, and he loves spicy food, like loves it. And they have an option on the menu, like zero to ten or whatever. And he's like ten, and the dude is as white as a sheet of paper, right? So the the uh, waiter is like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "Yeah, that's what I want." He's like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "That's what I want." So the waiter leaves, and then like three minutes later, you see the chef come out from behind and the waiter's pointing at him like that dude wants the 10, you know, <laughs> he, he, the chef shook his head. He brought it out. And I'm telling you within one bite, like tears were flowing. The snot was coming out of his nose. It was so spicy. And it's you know, when you're in that moment, you're like, I can't quit. I have to eat all of this. Right. So he's just like, he's just, <laughs> sweating more and more as he's trying to inhale it like i message him the next day and he's like "Uh uh-uh dude i'm gonna be here on the toilet all day oh my god yeah no that's you don't want the chef to ever come out and look at your table and shake their head that's not good good. (laughs) no (laughs) you don't want the chef to do that you don't want the surgeon to do that you know (laughs) i know i want to change my order yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah audible i'll pay for it i don't care just like (laughs) dude thank you so much for your time for episode 100 this was fantastic for those of you that are just joining us or joined us late it will be on our feed here in a few minutes on instagram you can see it on facebook twitter youtube or linkedin we'll also um, upload it to our website by friday and then ohm when will it be officially on our podcast network uh, two weeks on the pod. Awesome. So you'll be able to catch it and we'll be promoting it. And if you haven't, Community Trail Running, subscribe to his Substack so you get the podcast when it comes out and you don't miss out on these great interviews. And if your attention span is like mine, it's perfect, 15 to 20 minutes. It's ideal for you. So Adam, dude, thank you so much. Look forward to, to more conversations and more laughter in the future. Yeah, Jason, um, thank you so much for having me. And I'm really excited to follow you guys along. I love the fact that you're spotlighting everyday athletes. And I look forward to continued coverage. Thank you for everything you're doing. Appreciate it, man. Have a good night. Appreciate it.